Welcome to our lecture online. Just as what we had with solving two equations and two unknowns, solving systems of linear equations and three variables has plenty of methods to solve those as well. There are five different methods that we're going to cover in these videos in this particular chapter. The five methods are substitution, elimination, something what we call Kramer's rule, which I call using determinants, Method four is the augmented matrix method, also known as the Gauss-Jordan method of elimination. And the fifth method is using the inverse matrix method. So let's take a look a little bit what these things are. So again, let's say we have the three equations, three unknowns. This is known as a system of linear equations in three variables. Notice when we use the substitution method, we want to take one of the equations and solve it for one of the variables in terms of the other two. So we take the first equation and solve that one for x by moving minus y and plus 4z to the other side. So now we have this one equation where x is in terms of the other two variables. And then we substitute that in the other two equations. And doing that will eliminate one of the unknowns and you'll end up with two equations and two unknowns and we already know how to solve that or we can use the direct, what we call, method of elimination. What we want to do is we want to pair up two sets of two equations. For example, take those two together, take those two together. Well, in this example, what I did was I took equation one and subtracted from that equation three. Now notice, when we take the first equation and we have the third equation, if we subtract this equation from here, we end up with 4z minus 4z, and the z's are eliminated from that. Then I can take equation one and equation two. What I can do is I can take three times equation one, which will make this 12z. I can take two times equation two, which will make this minus 12z. If I then add those two together, the z's drop out as well. And so we end up with two equations and two unknowns. So you can see that either method will end up with two equations and two unknowns. You don't have to use both of them together, you can use this method or this method, so you end up with two equations where one of the variables has been eliminated, and at that point you can solve the two equations, two unknowns. Or we can use determinants. So what we're going to do here is take all the coefficients of the x, y, and z variables in our three equations. Notice when you take all the coefficients, we end up with this, and we're going to teach you how to find the determinant then we also need to find d sub x, d sub y, and d sub z. Again, we'll show you how to do that. And then to find the x, y, and z coordinate for the point where the three planes cross, we can simply take d sub x divided by d, not x, of course, d sub y divided by d, and d sub z divided by d. And by doing so, we'll find the point where the three planes cross. Or we can use matrices, and in particular, the augmented matrix. So in other words, we put the coefficients of the x, y, z's in the three equations over here, put a line there, and then we put the three constants on the right side of the equal sign, and then we take this through the method of Gauss-Jordan method of elimination, converting this into this format, and the numbers we end up on the right side here, that will end up being the x, y, and z coordinates of the point where the three planes intersect. Or we can take the three equations and write them into this matrix format. A, again, is the coefficients of the x, y, z variables in our three equations. The x matrix is the x, y, and z, the three variables. And the b matrix is the three constants on the right side. Then what we need to do is find the inverse of the A matrix. Because we can find x, y, z by taking the inverse of the A matrix and multiplying it by the B matrix. And again, we'll show you how to find the inverse of a matrix with a 3 by 3 matrix. And then we'll show you how to multiply this out to get the x, y, and z values of the point where the three planes cross again. So again, we have five solid methods, very good methods, to solve a system of linear equations. And now we're going to show you each of the five methods, and then we'll show you some additional examples. That's the plan for this set of videos, so stay tuned. We'll show you how to do that. So what's your favorite method? My favorite method, ooh, I like them all. Now, that's kind of weird to say that because they all work so nicely. But let's say that I want to get something done quickly. Well, that depends on the numbers. But I do like the substitution method probably the best because it's usually the quickest and easiest method to do it. But in some cases, it's a hard method to use depending on what the numbers are, and it's easier to use one of these methods. It turns out in some of the research that I do, 
I have these already set up in my Excel spreadsheets. I just plug in the numbers and it cranks out the solution for me just like that. So when I do repetitive kind of calculations, I like these methods better because you could do it using Excel, you could do it using a computer program, very easy to do repetitive solutions. But if you're just doing one single problem by hand, either one of these, and I like this one the best probably out of the two, Sometimes I'll use this method when it's obvious that I can take two equations and simply eliminate. For example, take equation one minus equation three, disease dropout, hmm, that's kind of nice. So that might be the method I want to use instead. So you can see how that's applied. Uh, but yeah, quick and dirty, I'll use probably the one up on top right. These are the ones I always use when I do my multiple calculations on Excel spreadsheets. That's how that's done. Well, no, I, I, calculate, I actually put the equations in there, and then, of course, I crank. This is, this is probably my favorite method when I use Excel spreadsheets, because I do a lot of that. I use it all the time. By hand is still one and two. One and two by hand is probably, especially one, I think, is probably the way you want to go. Yeah, you're right.